This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Daniel Aliash here at the HRS 2025 Scientific Session here in San Diego. And I'm joined today, it's my great pleasure to be joined today by my vice chair, Dr. Mahek Dande of University of Pittsburgh, and Melanie True Hills of StopAFib.org, founded in 2007. Yes. A tremendous patient resource, and we are very, very grateful to you. Thank you. Um, so, I, you know, I want to start off, you, you all are doing a, a very, very interesting collaborative study. And I love how collaborative it is. Um, so you, as part of Upbeat.org, are doing a patient-facing AI chatbot uh, with capacity for empathy. And this is across organizations, a partnership, and it's funding. So first off, congratulations on getting this all together. And can you all, could you summarize for me, you know, what are your goals, what are you doing, and where are you in this uh, project? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. Um, the initiative really is to understand the opportunities and challenges of generative AI when it comes to patient-facing applications. And what we find is that the voice of patients and caregivers and family members is not a part of the pre-deployment and deployment stages. And with that in mind, we came up with a collaborative team, including Melanie, uh, Trudy, and uh, representation from physicians and, and patient advocacy groups in order to appropriately rag pipeline and prompt engineer an out of the box LLM with the capacity for empathy and hoping to downstream once we've tested it for safety and efficacy, integrated with uh, upbeat.org. But I will let Melanie tell us about her role in our uh, uh, our consortium. And it's been really, really helpful to have Melanie's voice guiding us through the design of, of some of our testing studies and also the early deployment uh, of our uh, testing thus far. Thank you, Mahak. I appreciate it. And we have been privileged to have patients involved in this particular study, uh, not only um, reviewing the um, information that was going out to patients and putting it in patient-friendly language, but also helping you constitute a focus group or several focus groups. And about two weeks ago, we sent out the request to the patient community to participate. And obviously there was a lot of interest and a lot of response. You were mentioning you know, 179 people responded and wanted to be part of this. So obviously there's a lot of interest in the patient community. Well, I think that's very, very telling. Um, and you know, I, I'm gonna, I wanna challenge you with all with a question, okay? You know, I, if I remember back to the pandemic and um, where we started out, about 90% of my patient visits were virtual visits or telehealth visits. Um, and over time, it became very clear to me that my patients, when it became safe or when it was time, really wanted me to get from away from behind the camera and be close to them to provide that empathy or to, to really kind of be in person. Mm -hmm. um, and I think right now my practice is around 5% telehealth, uh, quite frankly. So... Tell me about designing an AI chatbot to face patients and to provide empathy. You know, what went into the calculus and maybe hearing some of those more challenging premises, you know, what goes into designing this for success? Yeah, I think that's an excellent, excellent question. It's one of the reasons why having patient focus groups and having this phase one study to really delve into patient preferences is so important and, and preferences of family members like caregivers. Uh, we have some preliminary data from UPMC where I'm currently conducting a pilot with the same technology, with the same technical partners at BCA Health Guidelines. Uh, however, the subsequent study will have more features in the, in the AI agent. But what I've noticed from the pilot study is that you're absolutely right. Patients do not, and we do not want a replacement of physicians uh, with an AI agent. However, the purpose is to have enough empathy and human-like conversation that patients feel comfortable and folks little when AFib feel like they're empowered to take part in their AFib care journey and really closing those care gaps where a patient might not have the opportunity to ask the question in clinic and then that question comes up later. And that's indeed what I've noticed in, in even the prelim study right now where I'm recruiting patients and they go, oh, well, you know, this question I never really asked, even if it's right after a clinic appointment. And what's interesting is that in the pre and post survey, the trust in the provider was measured at the, the UPMC pilot. And uh, we don't see uh, a change in that 
uh, from pre to post uh, interaction with the chatbot. I can't reveal all the details, but overall the trend so far has been encouraging with our interim analysis that the patients do not find it dissuading or off-putting to have an AI agent give them some uh, information. And so that was the goal. And that's why, uh, you know, having these focus groups is going to be so helpful. And, and down the pipeline, we also have a, an email survey that will go out a recruitment email to providers, to HRS members, because we're going to have a provider focus group as well, in addition to the wonderful focus groups that Melanie has uh, and Trudy have helped us uh, organize. Our hope is that we'll be able to capture the individualism and the personalization that patients want because every patient is different. And I think through the focus groups, through the survey, we'll learn some of that. Well, thank you. I think very good, uh, a very good discussion. So, so what I'm hearing is we're going to augment the patient-provider relationship with AI. But at the center, it's still going to be a personalized, humanistic experience. So, well, thank you for all for joining me. Congratulations on a great study, and I'm excited to hear your progress. Great. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to Heart Rhythm TV.